Saints, Prophetess Donna Ryan, Sermon of Low with Dawn's Heartfelt Corner here. I've got a few things that we need to talk about. You know, God gave me a word this morning while I was walking to the kitchen. He said, you're about to enter Goshen. That's what I heard the Holy Spirit say. Now, I want you to know I really appreciate those that are praying for me because I have been going through a lot. <laughs> God knows. Um, I've been going through a heck of a lot and um, and crying on and off, you know, and some things I don't even understand, but I, you know, we're not supposed to understand. God's ways are not always. We're just supposed to trust the Lord and know that He knows because I know He's getting ready to open doors, not just for us, but for others to go into the new season. And the enemy wants to stop you and I from entering. So he's going to do whatever he can to stop it. And I know when I get ready to do these videos, even when I go live, we've got a program sometimes that doesn't want to go up, you know. And I'm going through changes. <laughs> There's menopause. And sometimes I'm depressed. I'm crying and moody. And, you know, my husband, he puts up with me. Praise the Lord. Um, and I appreciate, I know that there are those praying for me, and, and I appreciate that. And I thank you for that. And you're in our prayers as well. And we always pray at the end of this program before we leave, because I think it's important, saints, that we pray for one another and keep each other prayed up. Now, I've got, I want to talk to you about what's been going on with the, the um, they're doing these asteroid exercises. And also, um, what God said to me the other day about, you know, I know there are a lot of people thinking we're getting ready to leave. We're not leaving yet, okay? It's not time for us to go home and be with the Lord. God is not finished yet. He's still working on the church. I'm like, I remember we've talked about this before, that he's going to discipline the body of Christ before the world, okay? So he's going to get us right before the Lord so that we can stand before the Lord blameless, okay? He's not going to come and get part of the church and leave the rest here. No, that's not what he's going to do. I know some people are saying, well, he's going to take the chosen, the remnant, and leave the rest here. No, that's not what God's going to do, okay? This is what others are saying, and they're thinking they're going home right away, and uh, we're going to talk about that a little later. And God gave me a message, children, do you think you're going to escape Armageddon? Now, I could be wrong, but that is what I heard the Holy Spirit say to me. We're going to go through things. I'm going to tell you right now, when we're seeing all these other countries get a weapon, we're preparing for war. We're going to have a war. I'm going to tell you right now. What about Israel? They're getting ready to go to war. We need to keep Israel in prayer. We need to create... President Donald Trump and I know there are people that don't like President Trump. They didn't vote for him. They don't like him. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, never says the right things at the right point in time. So, you know, I know I, I, I say whatever sometimes. Uh, I shouldn't say sometimes, a lot of times. I'm Italian. I'm bold. I say whatever I feel. Okay? Well, President Donald Trump is like that, too. He opens his mouth and says things he shouldn't say. Okay, we need to be wise as serpent and innocent as doves in these last days because we're dealing with the enemy. I'm going to tell you right now. The enemy is real. He's alive. He's out there. He wants to attack you. He wants to attack me. And we as a body of believers must be strong for the days that are ahead of us. And we as a nation have got to turn back to God now because I'm going to tell you right now, hard times are coming. Difficult times. Okay? And we need to pray for America. We need to pray that President Donald Trump makes the right decisions, him and the Trump administration, because whatever decisions he makes is going to affect all of us, okay? And that includes you, it includes me, and it includes the rich and famous and everyone. No one is exempt. Let's pray, let's invite the Holy Spirit, let's worship the Lord, and then we're going to talk about what we need to talk about. All right, so let's just pray. Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice in it and be glad in it, Lord. We come against the enemy's plans and attack and we rebuke the devourer. He's under our feet. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in this world, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you're preparing us and getting us ready for this time that we're, we're about to enter into a new millennium, Lord. This nation, this world is about to change. We're about to see a huge change, Lord. Now, I just pray that your will be done as we, we cooperate with you, Lord. We pray for the church, Lord. You've chosen your people. There are people that you're getting ready to anoint and use in these last days. You're getting ready to raise them up, Father. And you get all the praise, honor, and glory, Lord. We thank you for what you're getting ready to do. 
Now I pray for the lukewarm church that they would wake up and that God that you would speak to their hearts that now is the time the harvest is plenty but the workers are few that we need to get in line with what you're doing Lord it's not about us and what we want Father, it's about you, Lord, because there are so souls you're wanting to touch in these last days before the return of Christ. So, Father, we ask your will be done in Jesus' name and in our nation, Lord. Keep our nation safe, Lord God. We pray for a hedge of protection over our America right now in Jesus' mighty name, over our economy and all everything that you're doing, Lord. We know that we're going to go through a hard time. We do know that we're going to have an economic collapse that is coming, Lord, and yes, an asteroid impact will happen and we will go we're going to have uh, we've talked about um, miracles about food is going to be multiplied in these last days greater things that we are going to do Lord because you've said that in your word that we should do if we believe father now is the time we're getting ready to see some changes that are about to take place in Jesus name amen amen now I told you before I don't believe everything's going to happen all at once God's going to do it's going to happen but it's not going to be all at once. And I don't believe the timing will be long. I don't know. To be honest, I, I don't know. Remember, God's word says one day is like a thousand years. A thousand years are like one day. But every time I know I think God's ready to do something, he makes me wait even longer. Okay? Now, if he's making me wait longer, he's going to make you wait longer too. He wants us to learn to endure, to persevere. Look at the disciples. All right, they had to endure things. They had to go through things. They didn't just fly out of here, no. So what makes us think that we're going home just like that? No, we're going to have to endure, persevere, and, and just pray in the Spirit because God it will strengthen us and help us through whatever we have to go through. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Now, I love to be in the presence of the Lord. There's nothing like worshiping the Lord. Come, now is the time. Let's worship Jesus. Worship him, saints. Worship Jesus, he's worthy. Thank you. 
Thanks to Jesus.
I love this song. I played it the other day. I just can't wait to make all things new. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, saints. Your love is making all things new. You're working in all for good. And for the things of this world 
There is hope renewed in the life that is found in you. For you
never gives up in the run time. Yeah, sing it. Your love never fails. It never gives up and never runs out on me. Yeah, sing it. Your love never fails. It never gives up and never runs out on me. Jesus is getting ready to raise you up. There are those he's getting ready to raise up. Get ready. Let me see if I can play it. Here we go. Jesus. Praise him, saints. Mm, we love you, Lord.
some more than I can be. This heart beats so imperfectly, but when you come and I am filled with wonder, sometimes I think I glimpse eternity. goes to Jesus. He's getting ready to do some mighty things and we've got to stay humble before the Lord. And make sure Jesus gets all the glory. You know, I'm going to read you the scripture because while we were praising the Lord, you know, God kept telling me, you know, one thing that remains, nothing can take you and I out of the hands of the Lord. Where is it here? Um, I'm going to read this here. I think this is in Romans here. Let me find it. Hold on. I had just a second ago. <laughs> Let me see. Um, eight, Romans 8. Here we go. Romans 8, um, starting in verse 35. Romans 8, starting verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, verse 36, For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered a sheep to be slaughtered. Verse 37, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors. That's right. You and I are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Verse 38, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither Height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I love that. I should read it one more time. <laughs> I love it. Romans 8, starting 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship? Maybe you're going through trouble and hardship right now. Persecution, we're going to go through that. Famine or nakedness or danger or sore. As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. This was the disciples that said this. For your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, verse 37, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Verse 38, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, see, so whether you're alive or you're dead, if you're born again, nothing's going to separate you from the Lord. All right? So neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future. See, so it doesn't matter what's going on right now or what's going to come in the future. Nothing's going to separate us from the love of Christ. Nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So when the enemy is whispering in your ear, oh, that God doesn't love you and that God's not with you, you tell him to shut up. Get behind me in the name of Jesus, all right? I don't care what you've done. You know, I've got to tell myself that. I'm not perfect. You know, we're going to make mistakes. But if you're born again, you've been bought with the blood, you're, 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 you've been sealed, all right? And so nothing's going to take you away from the love of Jesus. 
All right. And we've got to stand on that. And we've got to know that's what God's word says. Because the enemy will whisper lies in our ear. All right. I love that. I just felt like to share that with you. Let me see. All right. So we're basically going to go over what we've been talking about. But I want to give you that word. I think I'm going to do that first, actually. That word, because this was, um, God spoke this to me. I was, like I said, I was going, I was going into the kitchen and um, having coffee. Um, I'm hyper without coffee. I don't need coffee. But I have to have my coffee in the morning. I, you know, you know, I've said this to Laura several times. You know, I am, we're, we're blessed saints. You realize this? You know, I am so thankful for a cup of coffee. You know, we we take things for granted. Seriously, we take everything that God gives us for granted. And that includes me. I've done it too. But, you know, God has been good to America. You know, we can, I can have my coffee. And, you know, thank you, Jesus. Could you imagine? I know people, if they couldn't have coffee, they'd go crazy. You know, for those little things that we take for granted, those little blessings. God blesses you and I every single day. All right, all you got to do is look outside, you know, you know, the birds in the air, the sun shining, you know, the little things that you and I take for granted that, you know, people also, our beds, we have a bed to sleep in, we've got food, we've got water, you know, other people in other countries don't have clean water, they don't have a roof over their head, okay, you know, we have everything, now right now I've got the windows open because it helps us save on electric, but you know, we right now have electric. When it gets high here, Florida, it gets hot. I'm gonna tell you right now, it gets hot here. You know, right now we've had these pole shifts and things are strange with the weather changes everywhere right now. You know, but we need to be thankful, saints. We need to be thankful for God has blessed this nation. All right. But I want to first share this word with you because God spoke this to me today. There are those I know waiting on God, and you've been waiting, and you're like, God win, God win. <laughs> I know I've said that several times. Win, God, win. You know, I feel like we're, we're, we live in this prison, you know. This is a prison, you know. Paul and them were in prison. And this is not a prison. I told you what God showed me that one time with uh, Noah and the ark, and they were in that ark with all those smelly animals they couldn't leave. You know, we're, we can leave, at least leave this apartment. I can go for a walk or I can get out. I don't have to stay in this prison cell. So. Okay, that's what I call it. When my girlfriend picks me up and she's dropping me back, you know, I'm like, I'm going back to the prison, <laughs> you know. But um, but he's getting ready to do things in your life and in my life. Now I'm going to share this word. Now everybody may not like this word. I know there are people that put the word down. Well, oh well, praise the Lord. You know, I'm not saying this to be prideful or, or think I'm better. No, I'm not any better. We're all the same in God's eyes. You know, but there are those that have been doing God's will faithfully that have been serving God and been obedient walking with the Lord I'm telling you you're getting right God is getting ready to do something he said to me you're about to enter Goshen as I was in the kitchen making coffee I heard the Holy Spirit say that you're about to enter Goshen where's Goshen a region of ancient Egypt east of the Nile Delta granted Jacob and his descendants by the king of Egypt and inhabited by them until the exodus a place of comfort and plenty Okay, he said this, you're about to leave your wilderness and enter Goshen. You have been there long enough. Now is your time, says the Lord. Say goodbye to all that has held you back. You are entering a time of plenty. There are those that have obeyed my commandments when no man was watching. That's right. God sees what you've been doing behind closed doors. All right. Others may not have noticed you, but God sees. He does not forget what you have done for him. All right? He said, I, the Lord, see. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich, the Bible says. I, the Lord, bless King David and Joseph in the Bible. Why can't I, the Lord, bless you? I can bless whomever I choose. That's what he says, so don't get mad at me. God can bless whoever you choose. My child, you are blessed. Going in and bless going out everything you touch is blessed i heard him say praise god and then he gave me two of these scriptures deuteronomy 28 6 8 deuteronomy 28 6 through 8 i have that written out for you in fact i did another video about that 
Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies to rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Verse 8. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all which you have set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. He also gave me Deuteronomy 15.10. You shall surely give to him, and your heart should not be grieved when you give to him, because for this thing the Lord your God will bless you in all your works and in all to which you put your hand. Your time of mourning is over. That's what I heard him say. I, the Lord, said that's enough. That's what, that's what he said. That's enough. All right, he said, I've heard your cries and have seen your tears day and night. Now, my children, you will rejoice. Get ready to sing and dance like David did before me when the ark was brought in. Remember his wife, Michal, she despised him. We're going to talk about that. 2 Samuel 6, I'm not going to read all of it, but I'm going to point to some scriptures on here. If you want to turn to it and read it with me. 2 Samuel 6, the ark brought to Jerusalem. Okay, starting in verse 9. David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How can the ark of the Lord come to me? Verse 10, So David would not move the ark of the Lord with him into the city of David, but David took it aside into the house of Obed-Edom, the, the Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. Now it was told in verse 12, King David saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Adam and all that, he, that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Adam in the city of David with Gaddis. Verse 13, And so it was when those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six paces that he sacrificed an oxen and fat and sheep. Verse 14, Then David danced before the Lord with all his might and the David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. Verse 16. Now as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and whirling before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. Verse 17, So they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had erected for it. Then David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. Verse 18, And when David had finished offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. Um, going down to verse 20, Then David returned to bless his household, and Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today! So she was probably like snickering and sneering. How glorious is the king of Israel today, uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maids of his servants as one of the base fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. So David said to Michal, It was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father and all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore, I will play music before the Lord, and I will be even more undignified than this. Hallelujah. I love this. I will be humble in my own sight. But as for the maidservants of whom you have spoken by them, I will be held in honor. My hand chicken. Therefore, Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. Michal was jealous, and there will be Christians. Yes, I'm going to tell you right now. There's going to be Christians and non-Christians that will be jealous of you. Hallelujah. You know, we're not sitting here trying to uplift ourselves. We're here to uplift Jesus. But there is going to be Christians and non-Christians that are going to be jealous of you. All right? My hand's shaking. There will be those that will snicker. Yes, they're going to snicker, and they're going to despise you. Ignore them, says the Lord. That's right. The Lord is saying, ignore them. Definition of the word snicker. To launch at someone or something in a silly and often unkind way. They're going to smirk and they're going to sneer. All right? You chose to obey me 
the Lord. Now I'm going to bless you. Receive my blessing, says the Lord. I add no sorrow to it. That's what God said to me. Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. That's right. So when God blesses you, you're going to know it was God. Because God did it and he adds no sorrow to it. All right? And all glory and honor goes to Jesus. That's right. In your life and in my life. He's getting ready to raise up those he's getting ready to use in these last days. Praise God. Hallelujah. That was a word he gave me today. I give praise to Jesus. It's not about me. It's about Jesus and what he wants to do in these last days. All right. I'm going to talk to you a little bit here. For those that are not on our YouTube website, you might want to go over there. You might want to subscribe. All right. You, so you can hear all the prophetic words that I've shared and things that I've been talking about. For those that are following me, know exactly where I'm going, what I've been talking about. Okay, I just recently talked about, uh, I had a dream about a big spot over my head, over your head. I was in the, this dream, I was at a birthday party. And that was on this note or card, there's a big spot over her head. And God was showing me that that was something to do, I believe, with Planet X Nibiru Wormwood, okay? Back in 2018, okay, um, there were th there have been those that have, um, the scientists that have come in against those that believe in Nibiru, okay? They, they said that the planet will cause a pole to switch, sparking great earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, which we're seeing, all right? How can they explain what we're seeing right now? You know, yesterday, I actually called NASA. I was trying to talk to somebody, and the guy was very rude, and he hung the phone up on me. You know, and I've tried to call the White House. I've tried. I've been sending emails. Remember, I told you, I've been sending emails um, to um, Vice President Mike Pence's secretary. I've uh, also, there have been people that are on the, I've actually spoken with somebody that's on President Donald Trump's prayer team council. And I've been sending emails there. You know, I've been sending them on the White House. I've been putting them wherever, you know, trying to get the word out there of what, what's going on. Okay. I put up a video on, on YouTube about Earth's magnetic field is accel accelerating, getting weaker. We've talked about the economic disaster with the farmers. What, what about the floods that they've been having up in Nebraska and, um, over in, over in um, Kansas and in uh, those areas, that's going to hurt the crops this year. We've talked about that. And I gave a prophetic word last year about this will be a very bad winter, which we saw, you know. And they're still having some bad winter up there. Um, up in, uh, I know where my dad lives, up in Chicago. Uh, I, get, I gave a thing about shrinking Greenland glaciers surprises climate scientists. Okay, these I put up on YouTube. I share um, Underground World News' videos with, with you to let you know what's going on. Okay, so you can go over to our YouTube and you can listen to all that. I'm not going to go over all that right now. I've told you I've sent letters to President Donald Trump back in 2000. I said, move away from the, the West Coast because, um, because of what we're going to see. We're going to see a huge earthquake over on the West Coast. We've talked about that before. I'm not going to go through all that, but other prophetic servants have warned about that. You can go over on our YouTube and you can listen to that. Remember that picture of President Donald Trump where the floodwaters are coming in and where the desk is sitting there and that's taken away. Remember that dream we've talked about that that person had and that God gave me um, a discernment on that dream where, um, where um, they left where is it here? In the front part of the dream, we were leaving the field of batting practice. I heard and felt the ground shake. And then, um, remember President Donald Trump was walking, wearing one of his blue blazers. He was walking al alone, wearing Make America Great again. A, a blue blazer, tan pants, and a red hat like the one he always wears. Make America Great. He was co seemed completely absorbed in thought with the team, but walking alone. And he said, you got to keep praying for me. Okay? And remember, I just gave a word um, because there have been others that have been getting dreams. Other Christians 
okay? And they're getting on their YouTube website and they're um, gossiping, okay? They're telling this dream. They're not praying. I don't see any of them um, coming together as a body of believers and praying for a person. You know, it doesn't matter who is in charge of our nation because God has given us the commandment were to pray for those that are over us in authority. And President Donald Trump is the chief commander of our nation. He's the president of the United States. And so we don't need to be acting like those on the left that are coming against him, the Democrats. We as a body of believers need to be coming together and we need to be praying for President Donald Trump. Okay? Not attacking him and saying, oh, he's going to get... He, I had this dream, he's going to get shot in the back of it. Hey, that is not something you're supposed to get on your website and gossip. No, that's a time to get in your prayer closet. Get on your knees and pray for your president. Because remember, I talked about a Jesus move is coming to America. And I'm going to tell you right now, if more of us Christians do not pray for our president and stand up and do what is right, I'm going to tell you right now, we can forget it. There's not going to be no Jesus movement, all right? We're, who said that we're going home? Just because we're seeing all these things happen. God said, look up, your redemption draweth nigh. But he didn't tell us when we're going to go home. I know everyone's saying, oh, we're going home. Uh, in fact, we're going to read that in a minute. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not laughing. It's just, I read this and I'm thinking, and then I have all these dreams. I'm thinking, I'm not getting dreams like that. I get testings. God keeps bringing me tests and trials. I mean, but they're getting these happy, singing the song unto Jesus like they're going home tomorrow. Who said they're going home? We're not going nowhere. We better figure out how we can be right with God right now. They're worried about stocking up all their food and water, which that's great. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you're not strong spiritually, you're not going to make it. You have got to be strong spiritually. You know, God talked about great miracles. We don't talk about it. Say we say we're going to stock up all our food and water and we're going to hoard it. God didn't say to do that. Why does it say do that? If you remember the children of Israel, he told them, go get their, 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 their man when they had it. And then they went on days that they weren't supposed to go, and God didn't tell them to go. And there was nothing. But when he told them to go, there was plenty. There was enough for them and their families. All right? So God will provide for us if we listen to what the Lord is saying. Okay? we got to stop listening to all this nonsense. I'm going to tell you right now. We've got to get our eyes on Jesus. The Holy Spirit will speak to our hearts, all right? He will speak to us and show us what it is He wants us to do. But we got to spend time with God. we got to sit in the Lord's presence. Now, right now, I'm home. I'm not telling you to sit home. God calls each of us to different things. But I'm telling you right now, if we're going here, we're going there, we're doing whatever we want. We're not seeking God, okay? What He has for us. Okay, pastors, I'm going to tell you right now, I know they, they think God's telling them to do this. They're planning on doing all these things. But did God tell you to do all that? You better ask the Lord. How can you get your congregation in order for what's ahead? Are you speaking the truth to your congregation? Are you telling them what the Bible says? Or are you telling them what their itchy ears want to hear? That's what's happening. Most of the churches are lukewarm. They're telling them what their itchy ears want to hear. There are wolves in sheep's clothing right now that are standing up in those pulpits. And I'm going to tell you right now, you better get down. You better get out, out of that pulpit. If you're not going to speak the truth, you better let somebody else up in that pulpit that will. All right? Because these times are changing. I'm going to tell you right now, and they're going to change even more. All right? And God wants us, church, to be ready for what's coming. Because if not, we're going to be lost. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's going to be a lot of people lost. Because they don't see what is going on. All right. When you're in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, He's going to show you. But there's so people that are so caught up in this world that they don't see what's going on. And the world's caught up. The news media as well. All right. The news media it wants to tell you all this stuff, but they don't want to tell you the truth of what's going on. They want to keep you so busy so you don't realize what is happening. So when it does happen, it's going to take you by surprise. All right? People are not waking up. It's time the church wake up. It's time the world wakes up. All right, let's go there for a second. And then I want to read you a few of these articles. Let's see what's going on with these earthquakes, all right? All right. Now, we're seeing them up in 
I saw Idaho, Washington, this one, I think North Carolina was yesterday. We've been seeing a lot over in the Nevada, all right? Let's see what's on here. Nevada just had a 3.1 and 3.0. I think the other day they had a 4.0. 4.6 in the North Atlantic Ocean. Where is that? It's, I guess it's somewhere out there in the ocean. <laughs> right? Somewhere out in the ocean. All right, let's go over to this CSEM. Okay, California is still getting the small swarms. Baja, California, Mexico is still getting them too as well. Let's see what's going on. I've given you the links. All right. All right, so now we've been seeing a lot of uptick over in the Yellowstone area, Nevada, um, Nevada, um, Wyoming, Utah. Okay, now this was, let's say, yesterday. These small swarms around California, Northern California. That's the Los Angeles, Sacramento area. All right, now I'm not going to give you all that. I'm giving you the links. Now, I believe, I was listening to some... Uh, D Durham, I think Durham, I forget his name. I think it's Durham. He talks about the um, the alignments with the suns and the planet, and I believe we're getting ready to come up to another one where we could have a big earthquake. And I feel the Holy Spirit keeps telling me California, California is going to have an earthquake. Now I'm not saying the big one. Hey, I don't think it's going to be though. I hope not. I don't. You know, I felt he was saying about an eight, a seven, or an eight, eight. You know closer to an eight. But I could be wrong. I believe California is going to get them ready soon to have one. All right. We're seeing more of these earthquakes are moving in to the United States. All right. So let me go to these two articles. Now I want to talk to you about what, what's going on. Um, here, let me pull it up here. With those asteroids. Now I just saw this on Fox News. NASA chief warns asteroid threat is real. They're saying it's about protecting the only planet we know to host life. They think they're gonna do something. See, they know something's coming. I'm gonna tell you right now. Somebody knows something's coming. All right. Because why are they spending all this money now? Um, trying to shoot these asteroids down. They're trying. Remember, President Trump also is trying to. Um, fix our grids and remember that scientist um, that I spoke with John L. Casey said that earthquakes would happen around 2017 to 2000 I believe 38 or something like that he said that we can see people lose power and water for weeks and months at a time all right and now we're we're seeing this gentleman from NASA he's a minister he's saying that he signed an alarm that asked great strike is something not to be taken lightly and that perhaps the earth's biggest threat is what they're saying okay the, right now they've got this conference going on this um planetary defense conference and they've been doing this for for i forget how many years now but it's supposed to run april 29 to may 3rd all right let's see here they, they've started this conference let me pull up this ad. Um, hold on one minute. Backing this up. Okay, so I pulled this off. NASA FEMA International Partners plans the asteroid impact exercise. And they're saying here that while headlines routinely report on close shaves and near misses when near Earth objects, NEOs such as asteroids or comets pass relatively close to Earth. The real work of preparing for the possibility of a near-Earth object impact with Earth goes on mostly out of the public eye. See, we've had fireballs and meteorites that have passed over, and they don't talk about it. We don't discuss any of this. What about all the dead fish, the dead birds, and all that's going on? What about all these earthquakes, volcanoes, the floods, the weather patterns? We're not discussing any of this. If you remember, I told you I sent President Donald Trump this letter. Let me see if I can find it. I'm going to look over it here, and I'm going to read a little bit of it. I, all right, I sent him a letter. I said my, I told him who I was. My name is Prophet Dawn Brown. I've written several letters of warning to the United States of America concerning what is coming to our nation. 
We are witnessing the increase of dangers of earthquakes and volcanoes hurling the pros hurting the prosperity and welfare of America. Okay? And I also talked about the scientist John L. Casey, who is right here in the state of Florida. All right? He's the CEO of the International Earthquake and Volcano Prediction Center. Okay? He used to be a leading... He's a leading climate, climate science research organization. Um, he's a former White House Space Department advisor, NASA headquarters, and congressional consultant, and was a senior field engineer on the space shuttle program. He's a leading researcher on the science of solar activity cycles and their impacts on climate change and associated catastrophe, geophysical events, including earthquakes, tsunamis, Catastrophic geophysical events. Um, okay, and he, he sent a letter to Secretary of Energy Rick Perry. Remember, we talked about warning the imminent threat to, to U.S. energy resources and nuclear facilities that their team of scientists detected from years of accumulated research. And he said that his team of um, his team of scientists. They estimated that damages that could strike as soon as tomorrow, which was back in 2017, indicates that many millions of Americans could experience earthquakes so large that all states and regions of the country could be without a water and power for weeks or months at a time. Now, President Donald Trump, we love you. How come we're not telling the people? Okay, we see what's going on, but the people do not know what's going on. We're not talking about causing fear. Why are we as a nation preparing for these hard days? Why are we worrying about the Russian probe and all this politics stuff? The enemy, the New World Order, is trying to get President Donald Trump out of office. And we, the Christians, need to stand up and pray for him. Because I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to affect all of us if we as a nation don't get right with the Lord. Okay, we're allowed, we're, remember I talked about we're killing millions of babies, we're allowing same-sex marriage, transgenderism, I mean, what about, now this Islam, we're allowing these Muslim gods in our nation, we set up idols, you know, did you see this thing about this, this lady, they had the first Sports Illustrated wearing her hijab and whatever they wear over there in the Muslim country, I mean, right here in America, I mean, they're starting this over here. They're trying to push their Islam into our nation. All right. So this is what we're seeing. And then we're celebrating Ramadan. I know it's coming up, I believe, this Sunday. We need to keep Israel in prayer. Okay. We celebrate these false gods up in the White House. Why, as a nation, are we celebrating them? These false gods are not going to help us. I'm going to tell you right now. Remember Elijah? The only God that helped him was God Almighty, Jesus, all right? Wasn't, the, Baal had their, their false prophets. They didn't show up, all right? They're dead gods. They can't do anything. So I sent this letter to President Donald Trump because the um, scientist was saying, we're saying that our research demonstrates that multiple big ones are about to sweep across the United States between 2017 and 2038. Now, we didn't see any big ones yet. We have not seen any, but they're coming. All right. So I, I said to him, I asked him, why are we preparing for our days and what's going on? I said, I'm not a woman entrepreneur. I'm a woman prophetess. God reveals me the dangers that are upon us in the nation and world. A woman entrepreneur is a person who organizes and manages any enterprise. I want to be a prophetic voice, organize, manage, and set preparations to safeguard our nation in this new era of geophysical danger that is upon us. We as a nation must prepare and get ready for the hard days that are ahead of us. If we don't start precautions now, there'll be no economy, welfare, prosperity for the American people. It saddens my heart, mostly God, that we've ignored what he's showing us. The calm before the storm. Then I received a letter from John, the CEO, John L. Casey, from the International Earthquake and Volcano Prediction Center back in 2017. He says, since your approach is religious and mine is scientific, in our own separate ways, perhaps we can get the government's attention. I said my prayer is that someone in the White House will pay attention to the signs all around us before it's too late. The lives of the American citizens are at stake. Thank you and God bless you. And that was one of the very first letters that I sent. All right. So we're seeing all this that is taking place. 
but we're not doing anything. We're not saying anything. All right? So let's get back to this letter here, if there's anything else I want to share with you. Okay, so they're doing these, these exercises, trying to shoot down an asteroid. All right? And we've been getting a lot of these near-Earth objects. Now, we're going to have one, okay? Let me pull up that scripture. Um, let me see if I have it right here. Revelation, I believe it was Revelation 20 or something like that, where it talks about it. I've read it before. I don't know if I have it right now. Right, let's just, let me just pull it up. I don't know if I heard it. Let me pull, let me see if it's in. Let me pull it up. I think it's Revelation 20. I don't know where everything's at. I don't know where everything's at. The Lord knows. Um, let me see. Oh, Lord, help me. Um, I can't find it right now. Um, one minute. Maybe it's not Revelation 20. But it does talk about that, you know, people are going to try to hide in the last days from the wrath of the Lamb. There is nowhere you and I can hide, okay? If one hits us, I mean, if something happens, it happens. I mean, you can make our bed up in heaven or in hell. There's nowhere we can hide. I mean, remember, let's, let's turn over this article for a minute. Remember, back in, um, where was this? Back in 2018, they said, Apocalypse fears, asteroid will hit Earth with with millions heading towards the planet now. And see, there's ones coming that they don't even know about, okay? And they don't tell you and I nothing, okay? They're saying only 18,000 asteroids are tracked globally with the majority not even monitored. So there are ones that happen that they don't even know about, okay? And then they said here, it's 100% certain we'll be hit, but we're not 100% certain when. And then they're saying, um, the thing that's really most important, we need a comprehensive map showing the location, features, and routes to all these asteroids so we can defend ourselves. <laughs> I mean, how are we going to defend ourselves? And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to shoot this thing down. It's what they're trying to do, all right? And they said asteroids don't care where they hit. It could be Australia, Japan, or Columbus, Ohio. It's really a global issue. All right, this is what they're saying. So they're telling us that we need to hide from it. There's nowhere, saints. There is nowhere we're going to hide from an asteroid. Okay. Now I believe we're going to have an impact. Okay. Now I'm not saying God's going. To, we're going to be destroyed. No, I'm not saying that. But I believe something could happen. I shouldn't say if. I believe something is going to happen. But God will protect us. He will protect us. And um, there's going to be a lot of deaths. There are going to be people that are going to die. I mean, I don't know when this thing's going to happen. You know, I thought it was going to happen earlier. Remember, I, I started showing you all that. I started um, I'm doing those videos about, um, I, I never had the Holy Spirit give me directions, what we're to do. I mean, he literally was showing me, you know, because it doesn't matter what part of the day it is. He was showing me that we need to be in it go into an enclosed area where there's no windows because the windows could could um, break open. I mean, could crash in. So you need to be like in a, a bathroom or somewhere and have your head covered. You should, I mean, God was literally showing me this. Um, you can go on our YouTube and you listen to those videos, which I thought it was then, but I believe God was showing me what's coming in the near future. Okay, He's given me videos and things Prophetic words he showed me that are coming and there may not be yet. Remember, I, I've told you before, people say, oh, you're false because you, you're saying it's now. Well, no. Uh, he shows things to a prophetic servants in advance. Remember, it says the scripture, a prophetic servant, I said, is called to warn the people of what is coming. Ezekiel 3, 16 through 19. Ezekiel was a watchman. Amos 3, 7, 8, when the Lord God decides to do something, he'll first tell his servants are prophets. When a lion roars, people are frightened. When the Lord God speaks, a prophet must prophesy. So he'll show us things that may not happen right that second, but doesn't mean it's not coming. What about David Wilkerson? He gave words and talked about things that are 
going to happen and we're just now going to start seeing things, all right? And he died. But, you know, God chose those things, right? And he gave me a verse, I told you, because there will be people that are going to persecute. He said one day is like a thousand years, a thousand years are like one day. So we haven't even had one a day in the eyes of the Lord yet. So when people say, oh, that's all going to happen, well, you don't know, you, you, you know, we just need to ignore that. I know there are people that are putting my videos down, don't like what I have to say. Well, oh, well. I've just got to do what God's called me to do. I'm not interested in pleasing you or anybody else. You know, I'm not perfect. I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm trying to hear the voice of the Lord just like you are, all right? So you pray about all this that I'm sharing with you. All right. So um, that's what they're doing right now. They've got an exercise going on right now uh, through May 3rd trying to shoot down this asteroid. Uh, trying to shoot down an asteroid. Now, I, I put up the links there for you to take a look at. I'm not going to go all into that. All right. And I got, I've got some videos up there on our YouTube. If you're not a subscriber, go over there and subscribe because I know there are those that like to hear the news. I just read a little bit up on it. I don't know everything. You know, that's not my calling. My calling is to share prophetic words, share teaching. And keep my eyes on the Lord. And that's what you need to do. The enemy wants to keep our eyes worried, fearful about all everything that's going on in the news. We know what's going on. Okay. We know this is going to happen. God knew. Okay. He doesn't want you and I to worry about this. You know, remember when he was in the back of the boat and all his disciples got all worried? And he wanted, when asked, he asked them, what, don't you have any faith? See, God wants us to have to faith and trust in the Lord. All right. God knew this was going to happen. All right. It's our job just to trust the Lord and ask God what, what is it we need to do. All right. So we don't need to worry. All right. So maybe if you're worrying right now, Father, I pray for all those that are worrying right now. Lord, that you'd put peace in their heart, Lord, to help them trust you, Lord, knowing that you are in control of everything, Lord, that they don't need to worry, be fearful, Lord. They just need to look to you for wisdom, for guidance in Jesus' name. And it doesn't matter where you live. Okay, I told you, we all need to be praying and asking God, where is it where to be? You know, God's got a place for all of us. You know, remember that, that, that one in the Bible, when Jesus was on the cross, he said, Lord, remember me. And he said, Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. You know, so we need to pray and ask God where we're to be. God will have us at the right place at the right point in time. You know, when it's time for us to go, we're going to go. I'm going to tell you right now. When it's our time to go. But if we're waiting the Lord and walking with the Lord, He's going to lead us and guide us in His ways. Okay. Um, go over on YouTube. I've got a video that I put up the other day about Americans are bracing for a spike in the food prices. Remember, we've been talking about now Mexico, they're raising prices on my avocados. I'm like, oh, you know, I eat avocados pretty much every day. They keep you full. I love avocados. Um, so go take a listen to that video over there on our YouTube. Okay, so we're going to talk about this for just a little bit here. I have a word that, that God gave me. Children, do you think you're going to escape Armageddon? Now, I don't know everything about prophecy, all right? I don't know everything about Armageddon. You know, everybody, I'm going to tell you right now, nobody knows everything. They think we're going to be here. We're going to be long. We're going to, this is what it is. This is what it means. Nobody knows, okay? We just all need to look to the Lord. And that really does not matter. When Jesus comes out, the main thing is, are you ready? Maybe you're listening to me and all this is confusing to you and you're not ready. You have not given your heart and life to Christ yet. You don't know where you're going to spend your eternity if you were to die this very hour. You can be ready. You don't need to be afraid or worried. You're seeing all that's going on in the news. In fact, more is coming. Okay. And God does not want you to worry. Maybe you're on our YouTube channel right now and you've been putting my videos down and maybe you you're not even a believer okay but today is your day God is speaking to you today he's nudging at your heart and he's saying you're talking to me I want to pray with you I want you to know that God loves you it doesn't matter what you've done we're all sinners saved by grace oh uh, this is grace and mercy thank you Jesus for dying for all of us he loves you he loves me if you don't know Christ today, I want to pray with you. First, I want to tell you, you know, for those that don't know, in 2000, I was in a dangerous car accident. I had brain surgery on the lights on my brain. I must die. I'm a walking miracle. I'm here for a reason. God's left me here for a reason. You know, I give praise, honor, and glory to Jesus because if it wasn't for Jesus, 
I, I couldn't go on. You know, he's what helps me. He helps my husband, Daniel. He helps behind scenes right now in time. I believe he'll come out. <laughs> he's hidden right now, and he chooses to be in. But this is what God's God is doing. We're waiting on the Lord. And um, like I said, I was in a car accident. I should have been dead. You can go on our website, www.dawnsheartfeltcorn. You can read my whole testimony. You know, and that's why I stutter with my speech. And I, people call me all kinds of names, but that's okay. You know, we're to love them and pray for them. You know, if you don't know Christ, today is your day, not tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know. I don't know. None of us know. But you can be right. You can be right with God right where you're at. If you don't know Christ today and you want to know, just pray the simple prayer with me, but mean it in your heart. If you mean it, God sees and he means business. But you've got to mean it. You can't just say a prayer and then walk away and do your own thing. You've got to be ready to turn your heart and life over to Christ. And maybe you're listening to me and you're a backslidden Christian. You haven't been walking with the Lord. You've walked away from the Lord. Now is your time to come back. Just go to God and repent and say, God, forgive me. Put me back on track where I need to be. God's talking to you. There are those he needs. The harvest is planted, but the workers are few. He needs you to get in line with what he's getting ready to do. Okay? We can't answer for anybody else. Maybe I'm talking to somebody, and maybe your wife or your husband's not born again, or your, maybe your children. Uh, maybe you're going to be the first one in your house to come to Christ, and you're going to lead your family to the Lord. I want to pray with you. There are those I am talking to right now that have never given them the heart, never given Jesus the heart and life. God's talking to you. He wants you to know He loves you and He'll strengthen you and He'll help you. He'll be there for you. All right? He never leaves us nor forsakes us. He promised to always be with us. Maybe you're, you've lost a loved one. Maybe you're listening to me and you don't have a wife or a husband. Uh, maybe you've gone through a bad divorce. You know, there's so many different situations, but today is your day. I want to pray with you. And if I'm talking to you, I want you to pray with me. Just bow your head and just mean it. Just repeat this prayer in your heart and say, Dear Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me and wash me in your blood. Come into my heart and save me. I believe you died for me, Jesus, to give me eternal life. I receive you now, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. This is the happiest day of your life. Go and share the good news with someone. Go and tell them what Christ has just done for you. If you'd like to write us a letter, the address is up on the screen. We'd love to hear from you. If God's just saved you or done some great miracle in your life, please let us know. Jesus gets all the praise honor and glory. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about children. Do you think you're going to escape Armageddon? That's what I heard the Holy Spirit say to me. Okay, you may have your own opinion. That is what I heard. I could be wrong, but that is what I heard. Now, I want to read you what I've been reading from others on YouTube. Okay, people are saying they're going home to be with Jesus. Okay, this one, the Lord woke me up at 3.45 a.m. with a confirmation message he will protect those that turn him. Surely he's coming soon, Maranatha. Well, like I said, his soon and our soon are two different things. Okay, yes, Jesus is coming soon. But we have to remember, his soon is not our soon. Now, the one said, most Christians believe in a quick rapture. Those being just raptured out of all possible trouble and conflict happening. It's a theology without involving any pain. So no preparing, so no getting ready for what's coming, so no praying with daily repentance for sins. She says, yes, the babies and elderly Christian people who have been tested fully are in God's hands to be raptured out. That's what she's thinking, okay? She's thinking that we're going to get raptured out and those that have not been following the Lord are going to be left here. No, I believe there are those God is wanting to save. And God's wanting to bring back to the Lord, okay? So no, you're not going home yet, all right? I know they're so thinking they're going to get right out of here. No, you're not going home yet. Uh, another one said, Jesus coming on a feast day called Rosh Hashanah, September 2019. See you soon. I believe Passover time. Passover came and went. 
Okay, and how does this person know Rosh Hashanah, September 2019? He's not going to tell you when he's coming. He's not going to tell me. No man's going to know. It says that in Matthew 24, 36 through 30. Uh, Matthew 24, if you want to read it, 36 through 44, no one knows the day or hour. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 38, for as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. Verse 39, it did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will we, the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 40, then two men will be in the field, one will be taken, the other left. Verse 41, two women will be grinding at the meal, one will be taken, the other left. Verse 42, watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. See, let me read it again. It says, watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. See, God's not going to tell you. He's not going to tell me. He's not going to tell us when he's coming. We may know it's the season. He says, look up, your redemption draweth nigh. But we don't know exactly when he's coming. And remember, one day is like a thousand years. A thousand years are like one day. Okay, people would say, oh, Jesus is coming for years. Okay. Now, I'm not saying Jesus is not coming, so don't go saying, Prophet is Don Ryan saying, oh, we've got years and Jesus isn't coming. No, I'm not saying that. But his soon is not our soon. God wants us to be patient and to endure because we are going to go through things. Verse 43, but know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into Therefore, verse 44, you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. And see, we do need to be ready. We don't need to be doing everything in the world. We're to come out and be separate, touch no unclean thing. Why are we the church acting like the world? We're to come out, all right? 2 Peter 3, 8, 13 says, But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. See, God was patient with you and with me. Aren't you glad I am? Oh, I am. I'm glad God didn't return yet. So he's being patient with those that still need to come to Christ. So you and I have got to ask God to help us to be patient. And I know I'm not one to be patient, because I'll know we go to the grocery store and I don't like waiting in lines. Daniel and I have been sitting here waiting for over, I don't know, 25, 30 years. I'm like, God, when? Get us out of here. <laughs> I'm like, God, when? You know, God has a set timing and purpose. He's got different things for all of us. So we have got to be patient. The day of the Lord says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Verse 11, therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Verse 12, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Verse 13, nevertheless, we according to his promise look for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. All right, another person said this. I had a dream, maybe a couple of months ago, where I saw a race of drum sets set up by the road, ready to go. I walked over to one set and tapped on out of beat. I presume the drums belong to the Lord's army. <laughs> I'm not lying. I mean, I just think, because and I don't know that's the way God's encouraging them. You know, they think it's time to go to the Lord's army. You know, it's not time for us to go. God wants us to be patient. Another one said, I went to a church food pantry day and they gave me figs. I've never bought figs or seen them. I said that the rapture is very near. Don't forget to have water and don't forget the pets. Well, like I said, everybody is so concentrated on that, all right, that they're not seeing how they can be right with God and get right. Because what if God does not return yet? What if you're left here? What if you're here for a while? What if your food and your water runs out? Okay, what if God didn't tell you to do all that? What if we have a recession and we don't have what you're thinking we're going to have yet? What if it's a recession right now? I'm just telling you. It might not happen the way you're wanting it to happen. 
okay? As the dome of the rock was on fire, Notre Dame, Dame both up in flames. God will not permit idols. Repent. He comes very quickly. See, people think he's coming right now. And then one saying, Obama is the beast, possessed the Antichrist, and the current Pope is the false prophet. How do you know that? Is, is that important? I know I see people fighting on YouTube, worrying about who the Antichrist is and who the false prophet is. That, that doesn't matter. That's not what's important. It matters that you get right with God and how God can use you right where you're at. All right. Then this this one lady uh, said, "Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly! Please gather your elect now. We are ready." No, we're not ready. Okay, God is not ready to take the church home. Remember, we've talked about it. He's first going to discipline the body of Christ and then the world. He wants to get you and I ready to meet the Lord. I'm going to tell you right now, if you were to come back right now, the church is not ready. There are things that are going on in the church that God wants to get right. Now, this lady says this, okay. And I believe this lady to give a word for the near future. It's not time yet for the Lord's return. Okay. I Like I told you, God gives us prophetic words. He's given many of us prophetic words that are not for this time yet. But that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Okay. God's got a specific timing. Now, this lady gave a word, and I believe it was a word from God. All right. But I don't believe it's right now. She said, open your ears and listen with your heart. This is the season of my return. Okay. Now, I believe that it's a word for the future. It's not a season yet. It's not time for the Lord to return yet. She says, I prepared a place for you. It's ready. I hear your cries. When, when? When will you take us from the, this terrible place? And see, what you and I are going through, this is nothing compared to what it's going to be like. I'm going to tell you right now. We're going to go through harder days than this. When will all our pain and suffering stop? No man knows when. It's for you to know the season and, and it has come, she says. Trust me and have faith. No, I keep my promises. No, I love you. No, I will call you. I give you my peace today. Do not fear. I'm always with you. Now, when others have read this, they think that the season is right now. Okay? And I believe it is coming, but it's not yet. I said, I believe this is the season of a new millennium change, not the time for the return of Jesus yet. There's still prophecy that needs to be filled, fulfilled, and the church is not ready to go home to be with Jesus. God will discipline the body of Christ first and then the world. And you can read it. I'm not going to read it. Hebrews 12, 3 through 11 talks about the discipline of God. All right? We've talked about that before. I'll just read this one verse, 5 and 6. My son, do not despise the chasing of the Lord, nor be discouraged when he, you are rebuked. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. So we're getting ready to see that in the church. Another uh, One lady said, this is exactly what I've been waiting to hear. I've been asking when for years. Now thank you. Your words are full of the Spirit. See, she's been asking God when. So she's thinking it's right now. And a lot of the body of Christ are thinking they're going home now. We're not going home yet, saints. I'm going to tell you right now. Remember, I've talked about there's going to be a great falling away. It says it in the Bible. Let me see where it's at. Right here. Second Thessalonians 2, 1, 3. We talked about the great apostasy. I gave a word on 1, 8, 19. My sheep will be scattered. But 2 Thessalonians 2, 1, 3 says the great apostasy. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or trouble, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. There's got to be a great falling away that we're going to see. We, now, we've seen some, but that's not the, the, the falling away. I believe that God's talking about right here. All right? For that day will come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is re revealed, the son of perdition. We have not seen that yet. All right? And then this one said, I heard this morning, this is the season. 
All right. Now another one here says, "Thank you for your encouraging message." Yes, Jesus, come! I believe it will be on Resurrection Sunday. Well, Resurrection Sunday came and went. I'm hanging on by a thread. I'm very sick, and so is my boyfriend. We're holding on, and we know that Jesus is coming. Now I'm going to say something. This, all right? I'm not judging her. Okay? I'm going to tell you right now because I got enough to answer for. I said this. The Holy Spirit told me this. Is she living with her boyfriend? Hmm. We'll save that for another message. God wants to deal with sin in the church before he comes back. I'm telling you right now, there are things that are going on in the church that he's going to deal with. Now, I don't know if she is or isn't. I'm just saying those are issues God's going to deal with before Jesus returns to get the church right before him, before he returns. We, the church, are not ready to stand before a holy God, and that includes me, all right? I'm not exempt. That includes me. I'm not perfect. None of us are, okay? This is for all of us. God is wanting to change all of us and get us right before he comes. Could you imagine if Jesus were to come back yet? None of us would be ready. I'm going to tell you right now. Lord, I pray you get us ready. Get us where we need to be. We need to die to this world, and that includes me. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm in, the same, I'm in the same boat. I'm not exempt. All right, I think that's all I'm going to share right now, but that's what we're hearing. Okay, so people are thinking they're going home yet. We're not going home. I don't believe that. All right, this is what God shared with me, and I'm going to share it with you. On 427.19 at 522 p.m., um, I don't know where this hurts out of nowhere. Children, do you think you're going to escape Armageddon? Okay. You will be here. It's what I heard. That's what I heard. Now, you need to pray about it. I'm not, that's what I heard. I don't even know what Armageddon is. So I looked it up. I put the link here. Um, it, it, it talks about the Battle of Armageddon. I, I don't have it right here. Let me see. I don't have it on hand to read it to you. I'll let you read it to for yourself. All right. Hold on. Let me see if I got the right thing here. Okay. I believe, like I said, I believe we're going to be somewhere now. I'm not pre, mid, or post tribulation preacher. Okay. I know people think we're going to get out of right away. There are those that say we're going to be lecture. I don't feel that. I feel we're going to be somewhere in between. You know, God took out, um, what's his name? Um, Abraham, was Abraham? Out of Sodom and Gomorrah. And, you know, God's not going to leave us here. Okay? I, I really truly believe at the right point in time, God will get us out of here. Okay? Because if you remember, Luke 21, 34 to 36, the importance of watching, it says, But take heed to yourself, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness and cares of this life and that day come on you unexpectedly verse 35 for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth verse 36 watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the son of man see i believe god will get us out we're going to be watching waiting and praying all right a big shaking is coming to the nation and world. Only those that are strong in me will be able to endure the hard days that are ahead of you. All right. Give me again the wise and foolish builder. We've talked about that. It's important that we be built on the solid rock, Christ Jesus. Matthew 7, 24 through 29. The wise and foolish builders. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine puts them into practice it's like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Verse 25, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Verse 26, but everyone who hears these words of mine does not put them into practice like a foolish man who builds his house on sand. Verse 27, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. And it fell with a great crash. Verse 28, when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, verse 29, because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. If you think that Jesus is going to catch you up in a cloud, think again. That's what I heard him. He said that to me. I'm, hey, don't get mad at me. I heard him say that. If you think he's going to catch you up in a cloud, think again. You're not going home right this minute. I'm going to tell you right now. 
These will be very trying times. He gave me 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Perilous times and perilous men. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to their parents, unthankful, unholy, versary, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people turn away. The church, I said, is sound asleep. That's what I heard the Lord say and needs to wake up now. That's right. The church is sound asleep and needs to wake up now. My people are in for a wide awakening. That's what I heard him say. Revelation 3, 14 through 22. The lukewarm church and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things says the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works and that you're neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Verse 17, because you say I'm rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire. Verse 18, that you may be rich in white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may be, not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eyes off, that you may see as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and with him he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on the throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Now, I, I put up this word. I want you to go li listen to this vision from, from a lady. A Carrie Ann, she had talked about a marriage supper of women, and I thought it was very interesting how she was wearing, she had a vision where she was wearing this white gown, beautiful gown, and she was waiting for her father to bring her down the aisle, and she had to be patient, she wait, and she remembers somebody saying to her, don't get your garments filthy and dirty, and I was like, wow, you know, that's a good representation of of when Jesus returns about the marriage supper of the Lamb, we need to keep ourselves pure and holy before the Lord as we're looking and waiting upon the Lord. All right. He said to me, God is going to ruffle your feathers. Meaning of the same ruffle means to upset or offend people. Prepare now. That's what he said. The shaking's almost here. And that was what the Lord gave me. All right. I'm going to tell you right now, we're getting ready to see something. Something definitely is coming. You know, wait, let me read you this poem. Uh, I wrote this in 2014 called Laodicea Christian. You may ask, what is a Laodicea Christian? Are you hot or cold? Be sold out for Jesus. It is written in Revelation, plainly told. All your plans will be ruined. It's not your will, but God's. Christ's return is very soon. Are you so riches here below? Sow them in heaven, a place you go. Only what is done for Christ will last. The time is going real fast. Make each day count. Here today and gone tomorrow. Our lives are full of sorrow. There is a crown laid up for you. Obey God in all you do. Be not lukewarm, but on fire for him too. Jesus is the reason for our lives in every season. Revelation 3, 15 through 16. I know your deeds, that you're neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you're lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I'm out to... I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. See, we need to be hot and on fire for God. Now, I'm going to ask you, if you feel like helping our ministry, you know, this is not the end. I told you we're not going home yet. You want to be helping out those ministries that you're seeing that God is using in these last days. Yes, there's going to be ministries that God is going to anoint and he's going to use mightily. And you want to be helping them. I'm not saying just give to our ministry. 
you need to ask the Holy Spirit where you to give. If you feel led to help us, we have three partners. God bless you. You know who you are. We appreciate you. We appreciate also those who have been planting gifts into our ministry. You know who you are. I told you it doesn't take many, but it does take the right people that God will speak to. If God is speaking to your heart and you feel led to help us in ministry, I'm going to ask you, will you help us? Will you come alongside of us? Will you partner? You can go on our website, www.dawnsheartbeltcorner.org. There's a place you can partner. You'll see my blonde hair. Or you can send it to our email right now. It'll come directly to us, all the PayPal, heartbeltcorner10 at gmail.com. You can send it in the mail. We are a 501 ministry. You can write off on your taxes, Dawn's Heartbelt Corner, P.O. Box 161273, Altamont Springs, Florida, 32716. I'll list all that information on there. And Jesus gets the glory. It's not about me. It's not about Daniel. It's not about anything but Jesus. But you want to get in line with what God's doing. You've got to stop giving your funds. To, I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of these ministries that are pocketing them. They're not using it to glorify the Lord. Uh, whatever money we get into the ministry is going to be used for God. I'm going to tell you right now. God's going to bless Daniel and I individually. All right? But we don't believe in taking the money that you're giving to the ministry and pocketing, using it for ourselves. It's going to be used for the work of the Lord. So if you'd like to help us, we could use your help in what God is getting ready to do. All right? I want to read you. Let me see if I'm going to read this. It's kind of lengthy. I may not read it all right now. Um, I, I, it's kind of long, so I'm probably not going to read it. Um, but if I don't know if you get um, some of these prophetic news over on Prophecy News. Um, now, you have to read each one. You have to weigh and ask the Holy Spirit, you know, how it's speaking to you about it. Uh, there is one by Jeff Byerly. He, he talks about, I know that you don't want to see what is coming up on the earth, but the truth is most of you will. And, you know, I read this word right after the Holy Spirit gave me that word. Children, do you think you're going to escape Armageddon? I was like, wow. I believe the Holy Spirit gave him this word. I'm going to try to, I don't know if I can put down the link. I'm going to see if I can. But again, he said, I know that you don't want to see what is coming upon the earth, but the truth is most of you will. All right, I'm going to read just a little bit of this. He said, my children, I know that you want to leave the place where you are at right now to be with me forever. I long for that too more than you know. But I tell you that the escape from your present dwelling place is not yet. Though it's coming sooner than most think. I also know it's not soon enough for some of you, but you must be patient. The escape for now is being totally hidden in the secret place with me. I will protect your spirit. Much testing comes now in the physical realm. Listen to me. You must stop listening to those who are prophesying out of their fleshly minds. See, I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of people saying, we're going on, we're doing this, we're doing that. We've got to keep our eyes on the Lord. He said, I know that you don't want to go through trials and tribulation, but all of you will. Some of you have already suffered great tribulation that have been refined, but most will be refined quickly in the coming days. Seek my face now fervently. Cleanse yourself of all filthy acts of the flesh and be holy as I am holy. You will spare yourself much pain, testing, and tribulation if you walk in my spirit and do not walk in the flesh. My spirit gives you strength. You cannot do it on your own. Pick up your cross. Die to the flesh daily and be refilled with my spirit daily by spending time alone with me in your personal holy of holies that is in your heart. When you are there with me, the things of the world become distant and I become close and you can feel me. I dwell inside and surround those who have invited me in and desire for you to perceive it. My beloved, I always tell you the truth, no matter how painful and difficult it is to hear. I tell you these things so that you will be prepared. Get your house in order and draw very close to me. Only those who do this will be able to stand in the evil days that come. Remember, I will be with you through it all, and I will not leave you ever. I will give you the strength to go through whatever comes before it happens, and some I will take home. The righteous perish, and no man takes it to heart. Merciful men are taken away, while well, no one considers the righteous is taken away from evil. He shall enter the peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking 
is uprightness. Isaiah 57, 1, 2. Remember, not one of you have the exact plan for your lives. You must seek me personally for details. I will not put anyone through anything that they cannot bear. Even though they think they don't have the strength, I give you strength in the very hour of need. Amen. God will give you and I the strength that we need. Trust me. Have faith that I do what I say. I know that you don't want to see what is coming upon the earth, but the truth is most of you will. I know that you don't want to see great earthquakes and the waves of the seas roaring and causing great destruction and taking many lives, but most of you will. Those that built their lives on my solid rock as their foundation will not be shaken and will be used to save many who are sinking. I know you don't want to see the man-made fire kickoff event, but most of you will. I've said before, America's event planned for your choice will be ten times more destructive than anything you've ever seen before. For you have rejected me and my ways and my laws. At this present time, what happens to America affects the whole earth. But America will fall in one hour and will come quickly after this event and show it brought lower than the third world countries of today. The son of perdition will come back to rule to you once again, but will leave and go on to take his place as the one world leader. He will leave just before America is offered up as a burnt offering on the altar of his father, Satan. I know that you don't want to see the worldwide financial collapse, and most of you will. My people will not fear, for I will provide for them, and you will be a great testament to those around you if you trust me and do not fear or take the mark that bears the name of the beast. If you remain on earth at this time, call on me to give you strength to stand and not bow before him or his image. I know that you don't want to see war, but most of you will. See, I'm telling you right now, this is what God gave me, and I happen to read this afterward. All right? It will be a worldwide and will be in your country, in your city, and even in your neighborhoods. But I protect the houses of my righteous ones. The angel of the Lord encamps over all around those who fear and delivers them. Psalm 34, 7. Many will be taken and be with me as well. Do not be afraid. I know that you don't want to see hunger and starvation of those around you, but most of you will. I want you to feed your families and those I bring you. After you run out of earthly provisions, I will give you... My never-ending supply from my storehouses in heaven if you'll believe me and fear not. I know you don't want to see disease, pestilences, and men collapsing right in front of you, but most of you will. I want you to heal them. If they die, I want you to pray that they're raised from the dead so that my glory is revealed and many will believe. When my power is needed, it is increased to my people in the first world countries. My power is not needed, but very shortly it will be life or death day by day. I know that you don't want to see persecution, but the time that is coming upon the earth quickly will be the most severe persecution any generation has ever seen. Laws are being set up even now that will make my name illegal, and the worship of me shall be not permitted. Most of you will see it, and some of you will die because of your love for me. If that is my plan for you, you will be honored, and you will rule and reign with me and given a crown. These days are being shortened even so, even now, so rejoice. They will not last as long as most men have taught. This was written up in days of old, but now is the time that this is being revealed. Remember, my time is in events, not in your earthly time. It will all happen quickly. Stay away from those who constantly predict dates. That's right. We need to stay away from those who say, because we don't know. They're not doing this by my spirit. After all these events, and the sun will black, and the moon shall turn blood red, the asteroid that has been sent by my hand will cause a great global earthquake tsunami, hundreds of feet tall. Every volcano will explode and cause fire cataclysm. The spiritual veil will be taken away as the sky recedes, recedes like a scroll. Satan and the evil angels shall befall, and my chosen ones will arise and shine in their glorified bodies. And do my mighty harvest work. This happens before I take all my people to be with me as the indignation and wrath are poured out upon those who have not repented and turned from the evil ways. My people have not experience my wrath. Now, I believe there's going to be those left here. Yes, he's going to get you and I out of here. Okay? But he's not going to take, I don't believe he's going to take some of you. Okay? I know some people think they're going to go home and the, the, some of the church is going to be left here. I, I don't believe that. Okay? I do believe that we're going to, uh, I, I'm try, I think I understand him, right, that um, God's going to come and get us out of here, and, and um, that there's going to be those that will that, that, be left here then, all right? 
I mean, it talks about that. Those that take the, the mark, uh, six six six. Okay, nobody really knows how God's going to do it. I don't even know. All right, all I know is I want to make sure I'm doing what's right. All right, all right. But it, it goes on and on, and you know, if you can get, I'm going to try to put up that link. But we need to keep our eyes on Jesus because we know this is going to happen. We need to pray and seek the Lord for wisdom and direction. We don't need to worry about how God's going to do it. Okay, but we just need to make sure that we're doing what day to day looking to the Lord. We're not to worry about tomorrow. Each day has enough worry of its own. Okay, so I'm going to try to put that link down. Let's pray. Let's pray for all of us. Um, let's pray for our nation. Let's pray for our president. Let's pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, we come together as a body of believers right now, Lord. Father, we're looking to you, Lord. We don't know everything. I don't know everything, Lord. I'm not professing to know everything. Lord, I want to hear your voice. I ask that you would open up my ears and my heart to hear you clearly, Lord. Because um, there's so many things happening. There's going to be so many people saying the crisis over here, the crisis there. And that you're coming this time, that time. None of us know, Lord. So, Father, we ask that, you'll, that the Holy Spirit will teach us. That we may walk in your ways, Lord. There's so much that's going on right now. We come against all fear and worry, Lord, right now. In Jesus' name, we take one day at a time, Lord. Looking to you, Lord Jesus. We pray for America. Uh, we pray for our president. We pray for the Trump administration, Lord, that they would make the right decisions to lead our nation in what is right, Lord. We do know things are going to happen, Lord, but we're not going to be fearful, Lord. Our hope and our trust is not in a man. Our trust is in you, Lord. We look to you, Lord Jesus. We know things are going to happen. But, Father, we're not going to worry about it, Lord, because we believe you're going to get us out of here at your appointed time. Not our time, Lord. We want to go right now, Lord. But, Lord, your time is not like us, Lord. So, Lord, we trust you knowing that you are, are, are going to do exactly what needs to be done. You're going to purify us and get us right, Lord, so that we can stand before you, Lord, holy and blameless without sin, Father. So, Father, I pray for the lukewarm church right now, that their eyes would be open, Lord, and that they'll see that we're going to go through things, Lord, that it's not our time yet to go home, Lord, that you'll wake them up, Lord Jesus. And that they'll figure out how they can be right with you, Lord. The harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. And you need more of us to get in line with what you're doing, Lord. And we just yield ourselves to you and allow you to work in us, Lord. As we die to the things in this world, Lord, and become more alive to the Spirit, Lord. I ask you to have your way in us. Have your way in our nation. Have your way in President Donald Trump and the Trump administration, Lord. Humble him as a commander-in-chief, Lord, that he will look to you, Lord Jesus, and seek you, and that those in the White House will seek you, Lord. We're, we're going to need your help, Lord. We can't look to false gods, because false gods are not going to help us, Lord. The only God we can turn to is you, Lord Jesus. So we get our eyes turning towards you. We're going to go through persecution in this nation, Lord. Things are going to happen, Lord. Father, um, we pray for President Donald Trump, his protection right now, a pile of blood over President Donald Trump and his family, the New World Order, and those that are coming at him right now. We ask, Lord, that you'd have your way. Every demonic spirit, we command to leave right now in Jesus' name. We pray for a Jesus movement that will take place. We pray that your will be done, Lord. Not man's will, but your will, Lord. We want you to be glorified in this nation, Lord. We don't want man to be glorified. We want Jesus to be glorified. So, Father, we give you the honor and all the glory and praise, Father. We want to see miracles, Lord. We believe these are the last days, Father. You said we will do greater miracles. You said that, Lord. And you're getting ready to raise up those you're getting ready to use in these last days. We thank you for that, Lord. Help us to keep our focus and attention upon you, Lord. We come against the enemy's plans, trying to distract us and get our eyes off of you and doing what you're asking us to do, Lord, today. We thank you for what you're getting ready to do, Lord. We give you the praise, the honor, and glory. Now I ask that you'd help us, Lord. Help all of us, Lord. I know you're getting ready to move us into another part, Lord. I'm a little nervous, but Lord, I'm not going to be afraid because you're in control. We're not going to be afraid of man and what man has to say. 
Man's not going to like us. They're going to persecute us and they're going to say all kinds of things about us. Help us Christians to stand up against the persecution. Because yes, the world will persecute us. And the world will not like us. But that's okay. No man's going to hurt us. Because Jesus, you are in control. You know every hair that is on our head. No enemy can come against us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you watch over us and protect us and keep us in the palm of your hands. Now I ask that you go with each and every one of us, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Go in God's strength. Know that God is with you. All right? I pray that God be with you, watch over you, protect you, lead you, and guide you. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't look to the right. Don't look to the left. I'm telling you right now, we're about to see something. I know a shaking is coming. I know that I know I know. And I keep saying that. I'm going to keep giving the warnings. Other prophetic servants keep giving the warnings. We have to. We can't worry what man thinks. It's not about pleasing man. It's about pleasing our Heavenly Father and doing what God has asked us to do. Because we're all going to stand for the Lord. And that includes you. Are you doing what God has asked you to do? We're going to stand before the Lord. And he's going to say, what did you do? Did you do what God asked you to do? Or did you do what you wanted to do? It's time, church. It's time we get in line and do what Jesus is asking us to do. I'm going to tell you right now, we're all going to stand. And that includes me. I'm not perfect. I pray, Lord, that I, I, I do what I'm supposed to do. And these trials and things are getting harder and harder. They're not getting any easier. They're getting harder. We need God to help us, to give us the strength, and to die more to this world. I'm telling you right now. All right, I want you to know we love you. We're praying for you. Thank you for all those that are praying for us. And if you can help us, please do. And until we meet again, this is Prophet Donald Brown, Sermon of the Lord with Dawn's Heart Four Corner. Have a safe and blessed Tuesday. And if I'm not live on here again, but the rest of the week, be safe wherever you're headed. All right, I'll talk to you soon. God bless you.